Today we're going to add and subtract fractions in which the denominators are multiples. So let's get started. All right. So let's start out with this problem. Five six plus one half. Whenever you add and subtract fractions, your fractions have to have the same denominator. And as you can tell right now, I might have a denominator of 6 and a denominator of 2. So they're not the same. So I need to create a new denominator. And I'm going to get that new denominator by listing my multiples. When I list the multiples of 6 and the multiples of 2. The multiples of 6 are 6, 12, 18, and I can go on and on and on. The multiples of 2 are 2, 4, 6, 8, and I can go on and on and on. Okay? I need to find the multiples that they share. Well, 6 and 2, they share the multiple of 6. So this is going to be my new denominator. So I'm going to draw a line and put a 6 here. Draw a line, put a 6 here. Alright? So now that I know my new denominator is going to be 6, now, now I need to find my new numerators, okay? I'm going to find my new numerators by going through this process. I, I know that 6 times 1 equals 6. Well, whatever I multiply in the denominator, I have to multiply in my numerator. So 5 times 1 is going to be 5. Okay. I know that 6 times, I'm sorry, 2 times 3 equals 6. And so if I multiply by 3 on the bottom, I have to multiply by 3 on the top. So that's going to be 1 times 3, which is 3. So now I've, I've created, when I multiply by 1, I ended up with the same fraction up here, that, which is okay because my denominator was already 6 here. But when I multiplied by th my numerator and denominator by 3, I ended up with an equivalent fraction of 1 half. If, if I were to reduce 3 6, I would re it would reduce down to 1 half. Okay? So now that I have the same denominator, now that I have the same denominator, I'm going to add my numerators. 5 plus 3, which is 8. And I'm going to keep my new denominator. Now, I know that from my, if you watch my previous uh, video on improper fractions to mix numbers, you know that this is an improper fraction. So I need to change this to a mixed number. And please watch that video and that should help you with this process that I'm about to go through now. Okay? So, over here I'm going to divide 8, divide it by 6. 6 goes in 8 one time, and I'm going to subtract with a 2 remainder. This is going to be my whole number. This is going to be my numerator. And this is going to be my denominator. So, instead of writing 8, 6, I can change that into a mixed number of 1 and 2, 6. Here's my whole number, here's my numerator, here's my denominator. Now, I also know that I can reduce 2 6. So I'm going to bring my 1 and 2 6 down here. Give me some room. And I'm going to reduce this 2 6. So I'm going to list my factors for 2, which is 1 and 2. And my factors for 6, which is 1 and 6, and 2 and 3.
what are my common factors? My common factors are one and two. But my greatest common factor is two. So I'm now going to bring my one over, just gonna bring it over. And my two six, I'm gonna divide this two into both my numerator and my denominator. So I'm gonna say two divided by two. What is two divided by two? And I'm gonna divide six divided by two. Well, two divided by two is one, six divided by two is three. So my final answer is going to be one third. All right, let's work another one. Let's try two thirds minus four fifteenths. Okay, right now I know that whenever I'm getting ready to subtract fractions. So I need a common denominator. Right now I have a denominator of three and I have a denominator of 15. They're not the same. So I need to get a new denominator. So in order for me to get a new denominator, I'm going to list my multiples. Multiples of three and 15. My multiples of three, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, I can go on and on. For 15, I have 15, 30, 45. Well, right now I can immediately see that the common multiple that they have in common is 15. So that is going to be my new denominator. 15 is going to be my new denominator. So I'm going to write my 15 here and my 15 here. Okay, now I need to get a new numerator. So I know three, let's see, I need to know my multiplication facts here. Three times five is 15. So I need to multiply two times five and that's gonna give me 10. I know that 15 times one equals 15. And I know that four times one will give me four. Now I need to subtract my new fractions, my equivalent fractions with the same denominator. Now at this point, now that my denominators are the same, they're both 15, I can now subtract. I can't subtract because here because my denominators are not the same. I have to get a common denominator, okay? So now I can subtract 10 minus 4, which is 6, over, keep my 15, 6 fifteenths. Now, um, I believe I can reduce this fraction. I don't know because I don't know which, fra which factors they have in common. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to list my factors for 6 and for 15 and see if they have anything in common. I don't know. I don't know if I can reduce this or not. So my factors for 1 and 6 for, for six are 1 and 6, 2 and 3. My factors for 15 are 1 and 15, um, 3 and 5. Hmm. They have some common factors. They share a common factor of one, of course. And then they have a common factor of three. But the greatest common factor is going to be three. So now I'm going to divide the numerator by three and then divide the denominator by three. Six divided by three is two. 15 divided by three is five. So here is my final answer. Now, I know you feel like this is a long process, but until you, some people, some people, they're able to do this 
in their head but for right now I, I would just recommend you writing this out okay so that way you know you won't leave out a step okay let's work one more six sevenths plus three fourteenths okay I am adding fractions well first thing I need to think of I need to have a common denominator do I have a common denominator I have a denominator of 7 and a denominator of 14 they're not the same so I need to get a common denominator I need a new denominator so I'm going to write my multiples of 7 and 14. 7 is going to be 7, 14, 21, and on and on and on. 14 is going to be 14 and 28 and on and on and on. Immediately I can see that they share a common multiple of 14. So this is going to be my new denominator. So I'm going to write it down here my denominator. Okay. Now I need to find my new numerator. Okay. So I'm going to, I know that 7 times 2 is 14 and I know that 6 times 2 is 12. I know that 14 times 1 is 14 and 3 times 1 is 3. Now that I have a common denominator I'm going to add 12 plus 3. 12 plus 3 is 15. And I'm going to bring down my new denominator. Hmm. That created an improper fraction. So now I need to change this improper fraction into a mixed number. So I'm going to take 15 divided by 14. 15 divided by 14. 14 goes in 15 one time do my subtraction so this is my whole number this is my numerator and this is my denominator so my final answer is going to be I think my whole number is 1 draw my line my numerator is 1 and my four, and my denominator is 14 and I have my final answer how do I know that 1 14th is my final answer? If I were to list the factors for 1 and 14, I'll get 1 and 1 times 1, and 1 times 14, and 2 times 7. I'll, I can, the only factor that they share is 1. So that's how I know that this fraction right here is in lowest term because they only share the, on, the greatest common factor for 1 and 14 is 1. Alright? Well, I hope this video helped you out. Um, please visit mathwithmoon.org for any future videos. You can leave your, uh, you can send me an email or leave a comment. And I will see you next time. Bye.